state of hip hop today is that hip hop is almost not about hip hop anymore. Hip hop is about YouTube hits. Hip hop is about Twitter followers. You know, hip hop is about Facebook friends. Really has nothing to do with rapping or graffiti or break dancing or DJing. You know, it has nothing to do with knowledge itself. Hip hop is basically a, a image of the inner city guy that's growing up. And no matter how he grew up, he wants to be poor. He wants to be, you know, uh, mentally challenged. He wants to be chemically induced all the time. You know, too much weed, a little bit too much drink. And it's more like the image. It's not necessarily music driven. It's more or less a lifestyle driven, but the lifestyle is more like the anti-social side or the underground side of what growing up in the ghetto is about, which is not what really life is like. And it's not what hip hop is like, but that's hip hop right now. Uh, should the artists be responsible for the message they send to our youth? Of course they should. I mean, uh, as being an artist, it's like you have a calling just like a teacher or a doctor or, or even a, a priest, like to entertain, you know, to tell a story, to keep people's minds occupied. Really, the songwriter is to tell a story of people's lives. So if you can't be responsible for the message that you're sending, and especially if you're sending a negative message, then where does that leave a kid as far as him trying to come up and live a life after you, after you done left him a negative message. A lot of people don't think that they, you know, should be role models, but, you know, once you put yourself in a position to be an entertainer, you're automatically a role model. So you do have some responsibility for young kids as far as, you know, the message that you're sending them because they're going to live their lives by casually through you or by something that you told to them. So you definitely have responsibility. Well, I, th I think the message, it has changed, but it's still the same in respect of that, you know, it's only a certain amount of situations that you could place around the situation, but it's changed because of, of the delivery of the message. Don't nobody want to hear a direct response from, you know, you got to kind of like sugarcoat it or you got to put it out there in a way that's more acceptable to what's going on right now, especially that being that uh, hip hop is the way it is right now. And a lot of it is so negative, you know, you got to make negative seem like it's not that negative. You know what I mean? So you have to be more mindful of exactly what you're saying. It's like, don't nobody want to bow down to the fact that the, the hip hop of today is not as good as the hip hop of yesterday. And if you say that, it's like they'll shoot the messenger. You know what I mean? Instead of just understanding that this was a craft that was forgotten. Okay, you could pick it back up, but you know, they just want to hear it the way they want to hear it. So like I said, the, the message, it has changed, but it's still the same because at the end of the day, it's only but a few ways that you could tell the truth. So in that respect, it stays the same. And the respect that it's changed is that the fact that don't nobody want to hear the truth. So you got to put it out there so that they don't hear it, but they, it's out there for them to pick up if they want to hear it. I think the agenda behind the messages that sent out today is twofold. The main agenda is to take away mature person from a younger person so that there's only young people talking to young people. What you have there is confusion and a lack of knowledge and a lack of a person wanting it to mature. That's the first agenda. There's been a total disconnection between an older man and an older woman and a younger man and a younger woman because young people only feel they need to listen to young people. So that's the first agenda and that's the first mistake that a young person will make. The second agenda is just so that you could raise up all of these young men not to learn because they, they feel they don't got to listen to nobody. If you don't listen, you're not gonna learn, so you're not gonna go to school, and if you're not gonna go to school, then you're not gonna have a good job, and if you're not gonna have a good job, then you're just gonna be out on the street. And if you're out on the street and you're not making money, obviously you're gonna go into illegal means of making money and you'll wind up in jail, and that's the second agenda, and that's the most important agenda, to more or less get kids ready for the fact that they will be incarcerated once they don't have gainful employment. And, and I think uh, it's a two-pronged attack, and I think both agendas have worked very well. Most of you young people out there, if you don't learn and don't strive and work hard, you will wind up in jail, and the only advice that I can give to you is don't sleep on your stomach. The advice that I would give to an up-and-coming artist is 
you got to go out there and be different. What's wrong with the industry right now, which is way too much of the same thing, is the same story that's told 20 times over and nobody pays for the same. They pay for the difference. There's a million things to write about and to make songs about. And like true songwriter, any sound that's ever made is a hit song somewhere in there. And you got to try to find that hit song. Get away from the image thing. Get, get away from that. You got to be a true songwriter. If you're a real songwriter, do what it is that you was really meant to do. You find them song that's a person song. Like when they hear your song, they want you want them to jump up and say, yeah, that's my song and not rap about your chain and, and, and your car and your house because that's not nobody's song except for yours. Like first thing is to be different because like I said, you get paid on the difference, you don't get paid on the same. And the main thing is just to try to write good songs. Don't be settled for just telling the story about how you was in the strip club, which is nothing wrong with that either. But the main thing is you have to try to write a good song. If you want to be a songwriter, you have to write the best song that you could possibly write. Well, uh, currently today I'm doing a lot of different things. I'm working on doing a Furious 5 album, which is basically going to consist of mostly like an R&B album because I think the state of hip hop right now is like it's kind of, you know, in a bad place. You know, my vision is if you add more R&B to it, you have a better chance to be successful. I do a, a lot of fitness stuff. I work with uh, Bronx Net doing a fitness show. You know, I developed the apparatus that I'm about to put on the market, do a, a fitness video. And, uh, we, you know, we're trying to get a little program, you know, a mentor program for the kids just to, to show them, you know, another side of dope people could actually have a good communication with youth that don't have nothing to do with uh, nothing negative, you know, just to show, you know, young men and women how to be, you know, mature men and women. Just got a lot, you know, that we got to do and to get done and just to further what really hip hop is about and then take it into out of the music culture and into a lifestyle culture that's positive, that has nothing to do with drugs, street, guns, and demeaning people. You know, just take hip hop out of where we had it, it was having fun, but it was positive, and then to adjust the lifestyle culture, which is still positive. We got a work ahead of us, but uh, you know, it's gonna work out, it's gonna happen. I've seen with my own two eyes the birth, growth, and sudden death of what is commonly known as hip hop. This is my moment in time. This is my tableau.